بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نستعينه ونستغفره ونقر به وعز وجل أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا عباد الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته With the name of Allah, the beneficent benefactor, the beneficent redeemer, we turn to him begging for assistance and asking for his forgiveness. He is the mighty, the sublime. I bear witness openly, without hesitation whatsoever, that there is nothing worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Prophet Muhammad of 14 centuries ago is a servant and messenger. Dear Muslims, we greet you with the greeting that all the ancient worthies use from Adam to the day of assalamu alaikum which means peace be upon you. It's an honor to, as always, to be before you and to share with you the life-giving message of Al-Islam. And Allah Most High says in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Mini Shaitan Rajeeb Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Laysa birra an tuwalu juhakum fiballal mashriki wal madribi wala qindal birrab birrab birra wala كن البر من أمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وأتى المال على خبه It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east or the west. Laysa birra. Birra is righteousness. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces east or west. But it is righteousness. to believe in Allah. وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَا أَمَّنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْأَخِرِ To believe in Allah and the last day, the Akhir. وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ and the angels. وَالْكِتَابِ and the book. وَالْنَّابِيِّينَ and the messengers. So we as Muslims, we believe in Allah, we believe in the last day, we believe in the messengers, the angels, and spend out of your substance, out of love for him, for your kin, for the orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves. To be steadfast in prayer, to practice regular charity, and fulfill the contracts which ye have made, and to be firm and patient in pain and suffering and adversity. And throughout all periods of panic, 
Such are the people of the truth, the God-fearing. So we love Allah, we spend out of our sustenance, out of love for Allah. We don't give charity for those to see us. Yeah, well, I'm going to give some, I'm going to do something, I'm going to help them out. We give charity from our sustenance for love of Allah. We spend out of our wealth for our kinfolk, for the orphans, for the needy. So this right here is saying, well, you're going to have to be productive to spend, to give charity, you have to be one who earns, to do for your family, to do for the needy, you're going to have to be a productive individual. So righteousness is not just escaping from responsibility. In fact, this is one of the things that was denied us as African Americans. The ability to be responsible. So righteousness is being able to address the problems of the need. Now, if you're a Muslim and you have so much knowledge and you're always needy, we have to reflect. We have to reflect on what our duty is in attaining building righteousness. And being steadfast in prayer and practice regular charity. And fulfill the contracts which ye have made. And there are many types of contracts we make. So righteousness to the Muslim there's a whole number, a host of, of uh, very important insights in bill, righteousness. And we believe in the messengers of Allah, the messengers, the Nabi'een. That means not just one, but all of the messengers of God. Jesus, Abraham, Noah, all of the righteous messengers of God. The Muslim is not hung up on those little silly hang-ups. Well, my message is better than your message. No, we even call Jesus Aisa ibn Maryam. We call Jesus a righteous Muslim, a messenger of Allah. No problem. Abraham, Ibrahim, a messenger of Allah. Now, when we say messenger in this sense, we mean one who has received the revelation. One who the, 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 the book was revealed to. The messenger of Allah. So we don't have the silly little hang-ups. My message is better than yours and this. No. You say so-and-so is a messenger, let's see what was revealed to them. There's no problem in that descent, in that regard. Truth is clear and free from error. You don't have to try to put any clothes on it. It's true. Which brings us to what we want to speak in this brief uh, kutbah, and that is the affliction of this disbelief. The worst affliction that society faces is the affliction of disbelief. It's not crime. You always have crime. He bleeds. Disobeyed, he was a criminal, and he was given time. So you can always have an at least minded individual. We don't get along to be stabilized because of crime. That's not the main problem and the affliction of society. It's not teenage marriages, it's not dope. This is not the problem. The main problem is disbelief in Almighty God, because disbelief in Allah is what makes all these other things possible. So you find people, it is only because of disbelief in Almighty God why they go in these different areas of self-destruction. If they would reflect, I did not create myself, my mother and father did not create themselves, I'm not the creator of this creation. And Allah says, think not that your creation is bigger than the creation. 
So, when you declare your independence, your Islamic independence, it's not like it was yesterday out in the park and everybody drinking beer and partying and bread. No! The problem is the disbelief in Almighty God. Because you have those who say, I know I did not create myself, but I don't believe in that stuff. I'm going to do my own thing. And they cover up the blessings, the nearness that Almighty God had given them. They cover it up. And that's what you do. That's what they call a disbeliever, a kafir. From kafara means to cover up. He's ungrateful of where the blessings come from. If somebody will lie to you about Almighty God, what make you think they won't lie to you about anything else? Lie to you on God, a big red light should come up in your intellect. They're trying to mislead you. Trying to take you away from the obedience that Almighty God has established in the creation. But Allah has, has already given a certain amount of freedom and independence to the human beings and to the society. And it says that everything in creation glorifies Allah. Everything glorifies and bears witness. So the one that's ungrateful covers up where the blessings are come, coming from. You need what Allah has created for your sustenance to live. You need food. Allah has put in you certain needs as a human being. You need to interact with other human beings like you. You are a social creature. If you're a man, you don't like to be by yourself. You want companionship. You want a wife. Now some will preach, oh, I don't bother you. Yeah, no, but that's not the that's not the, the completion. You want life. You want companionship. These are natural, these are natural blessings that Almighty God has given the human being. If it's a woman, she wants a nice, virtuous man to be responsible, to give her security, to make her feel complete. This is the order of Almighty God. But when we cover up the blessings, and Shaitan comes at us at every minute, every hour of the day, to take us off of the guidance. So we have to be conscious of God's guidance every minute and every second of the day, and that's this for an We have to be conscious every second, every hour, because there are forces and influences designed to take us off the obedience mm -hmm. path that Almighty God has established to human being. When we come to prayer, we say, Hayya ala salat. We want life. Brother want a wife, you don't go down there to Coles and say, hey, Cole, look, fix me up with a woman. You got a lot of them laying on there in all these rooms you got down there. Fix me up with one. No, he don't say that. He wants somebody that's alive. <laughs> he knows that life is generated. The, 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 the differences, what we have a concept in that Islam, the uh, Tawheed. Our differences are not accentuated. The main message is our unity and our oneness. We have natural differences. The man is not like the woman. There are differences. And two differences come together, created by one, but multiplied by differences. But these natural differences don't constitute superiority and inferiority, these are the natural nearness and blessings that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has put here for us. Life. Not death, but who has tricked the Muslim and others to want death more so than life? We put more emphasis on the dead than we do on the living. Somebody died, we get
get all enthused and, and we get this and we get this and we get this and everybody want to come up and cry and the preacher, he's given an uh, explicit purpose to make them cry and emotionalize them. And then we have living ones around here to stand toe to toe to you and say, what you believe in, mama, ain't nothing. And it pains mama to see something that she went through pain and travail to bring here in the world, they stand toe to toe. Say that Islam, mama, ain't nothing. I turned my back on it. Why is this? Are we fooling ourselves? So what is happening is that we're losing the real perspective. When we think shahadatay, ashadu, and la ilaha illallah, that's all encompassing. There's nothing here that I should have as a deity or that I should worship. Because everything in this creation has been put here for my sustenance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, wa shamsi wa kamara. He has brought down the sun and the moon for your service. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, unity is a blessing. Division is a punishment. So today we, we have many who are confused and suffer this affliction of disbelief. Many say they believe. Oh, I believe in Allah. But they only accept a portion of the message. <clears throat> we have to accept the message holistically. This is the participatory religion. When you step off to your side and make your sunnah records, that's saying that you have a responsibility yourself to lead yourself to govern yourself. If the imam makes a mistake, the one in the group says, SubhanAllah, and fill in where the mistake has been made. But we don't constantly complain and we're just mumbling and complaining. No, you have, this is a participatory religion. You, if you don't know your prayers, you sit up and, and the call has always come out. Come out on Wednesday. We want more detail on prayer, more detail on what you have to know. And you come to a brother, call me there. Oh, I don't know it. How long have you been in the community? Oh, about 30, 40 years. You don't know it yet? And the call is off. Come out. Come together. We came together to learn the lessons. Put them forth verbatim. about the moon and the plant that brought up the earth and the moon and the mountains and all this kind of stuff. We knew that and quote that verbatim. So we have a situation that is this affliction. They see, sometimes you can get an affliction and don't even know you have it. Just like a person would be racist. They don't know they're racist. You just like they got a cold or something. They think it just is. <laughs> it's so imperceptible. It enters their system. Little virus. It's like little virus in your system. You pick 200, six bugs, six four, 300 pounds. Little virus in it. You cough and you lay it up in the bed. It was just, just flatten out. Little virus. You couldn't even see it. Entered his body. When you have diseases in your spirituality that can enter your system, and just take all the life out of you. You'll be hollow. 
You don't like to say the wheat and the tare. You'd be just like, uh, you know, find some wheat that the tare is ringing up, just empty, hollow. You think you got something that ain't nothing that's empty. We don't want that. So the religion of Al Islam is a participatory religion. We all have responsibilities, irrespective of what your pedigree is, what your academic acquisition might be. You stand up and line up with everybody else. And if the leader doesn't know, is filled in by the person behind him where the error and the mistake, and we move forward. It only takes three of us to call a Juma. This is the most important day of the Muslim community. Juma. It only takes three to have Juma. In this religion of Islam, there is no hereditary sin. And there is no group, universal, collective redemption. In Al Islam, we don't think, we don't, we don't believe that you're born sin in sin. Adam slipped, but Zayla Huma Shaitan, he slipped. But it wasn't his resolve, his intention to slip. And he came into a word with Almighty God and Almighty God forgave him. And he taught Adam all the names. See, at one time, man used to worship angels and forces of nature, but as he grew in intelligence, then he became his rightful role. These things are to serve him. The concept. Man is the one who knows the concepts of things. So when you name something, he knows the knowledge of that which was named. But if you're afflicted with disbelief, and you think you're going to come up with something, if people in the crazy house right now, I'm a law. Why am I going to do I can do I'm a law. I'm God. And they're just as crazy as hell because they lost all perspective. You either submit willingly or unwillingly. So the Muslim's identity is not many of these superficialities that put out here. The Muslim's identity is not how you wrap your head up. Not kind of long robe. You got a long robe. You got, you got sandals, leather sandals, and you got all kind of bees that glow in the dark. It's more than that, dear Muslim. If you go into many of the land where people dress like that, you'll find that even the disbelievers wear the same stuff. <laughs> Don't put so much emphasis on that. We as Muslims have to put more substance in what we represent. If there's no substance there, People will know it instantly. See, even if you don't know, you don't have certain things, there are certain things that are automatically stand out so radiant in human existence. If you're honorable and decent, there are many people, it's too difficult for them to be honorable, decent. Got a whole lot of money. Got a whole lot of influence. And it burns them up if they see that you don't have anything, but yet you're moral, you have decency, you have principles and values. Mm -hmm. So our identity as a Muslim is not these superficialities. Our identity is not a particular landmass. My whole life and education is to take Africa back. And you research, you find that that wasn't even the name the people live over there didn't even call it that name. Leo Africanus. Find out who these people were. 
They wanted the people that lived there. So we put all this credence on superficialities. And it says that Shaitan, Satan is a clear enemy, a clear and open enemy to you. Because he'll come in, he'll come in and confuse your God concept. A lot is too big to be put on a piece of wood. A lot don't have no sons and daughters relatives. Allah is free of these weaknesses that evil folks try to attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But shaitan is not a person that gives up. He invites himself into many homes. Right, right there in your home, through the music, through the naked videos, whatever, you can come right in your home and you say nothing about it. That us brother is some of us. <laughs> yeah. Shaitan is a clear and open enemy to you. Now, if you give up on Allah, Shaitan becomes your friend. The minute you give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan is right there. He's right there to become your friend. See, we have many Muslims with all kinds of philosophies and ideologies and methabs and this and that and the other, but they have failed to bring about the unity necessary for the human being. Because why? It is only Allah that can bring about the end of heaven. It is only Allah that's El Jami. It is that, that really brings you brings it about. If you're still looking for superficialities, you won't see it. Because you're waiting for somebody to tell you to beat the drum for you, to call you on the phone personally with a personal invitation to come out. And as a Muslim, you shouldn't even neglect yourself, you shouldn't neglect your family, and you should not neglect your masjid or your community. Allah. The Muslim should not neglect his family. He should not neglect his responsibilities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya ayyuhal ladina, our full bill ukut. All you who believe fulfill all obligations. So when you see the Muslim, well, maybe we can conclude that we don't see you here regularly. Maybe Shaitan is just whipping the hell out of you. So we're going to have to pray for that brother and sisters that we don't see on a regular basis. That's the Muslim way. Let's pray for them. But we know when we get strength, we come out. We want to be responsible. Now, we don't want to be like some. Now, I ain't working nowhere. Don't want to work nowhere. Give up on the world, and you can always call on them to be there. We tell some of them, stop. You're going to find you a job. Be responsible to yourself first. Because the Muslim shouldn't want to lose his identity under pressure. Don't lose your identity under pressure. The Muslim does not eat pork, nor does he sell pork. The Muslim does not drink wine, nor does he sell wine. The Muslim does not take dope, nor does he sell dope and paraphernalia. The Muslim does not lose his identity under pressure. And you find those under pressure. Look, pressure is good for us. That's right. If pressure is from Allah, it's good. But old Shaitan put the pressure on you and make you lose, make you change from your direction. What does Allah say? Allah said, well, ask. Look. Well, also by the time man is in loss. And also comes from the word asir, that which is you squeeze to get something out. Like orange juice, you squeeze asir, asir. By the time man is in loss, so you put pressure on a person, and then that's what happens. They lose their direction. 
Man, they did it to me, man. Yeah, that old lady I had, man, she walked off with the money, man. I come from work, man. The house is dirty. She out on the street playing cards and shooting dice. I come home to everything. The crowd of strangers in my house. Blah, blah, blah. Look, the pressure causes the person to leave their balance. I see her. And say, Allah says, verily, man is in loss. Except those who believe and do good. In regards to how bad things get, it don't justify doing wrong. Except those who believe and do good. And join together in the mutual teachings of truth and patience and constancy. And then when you grab hold of this religion and you take it totally, then you'll see that those that turn their back on the beauty of Al-Islam, it doesn't hurt a lot in the least. Brother got a wife at home, saying, well, look, I was born eating swine, and I was born drinking wine, and now if you don't do this and you don't do that, and you got to make him feel like that that's the only woman that Allah put on earth. Allah may bless him with a woman 10 years younger and more education than everything else. He don't know. Or vice versa. The woman struggling, trying to obey Allah, trying to do the dinner, and, then, and she got somebody that just called giving her hell and everything else. No, Allah is merciful. And we don't lose our identity under pressure. Well, awesome. In that insanity, nefekul, verily man is in loss, except those who believe and do good. And everybody got some on somebody. Everybody scared to stand up. Yeah, I, 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 this is me. Al Islam. I'm a Muslim. Muslim is not supposed to commit adultery. Muslim is not supposed to commit fornication. A Muslim is supposed to do the pay charity. Muslim. I'm a Muslim. People are scared. A lot of people can't be a witness. But we ought to lose valuable time laboring with that. The believers would be happy and joyous when we come among each other. Because we can always repent for Almighty God to bless us with guidance. You always have that option. That's right. To call on Allah. Ya Allah, give me the strength for guidance. Allah has not left the human being without guidance. Allah has always given the human being guidance. We are not protected like the animals are protected. The bear, the monkey, the other species, they are protected under natural law and instinct. The dog, he's protected under natural law and instinct. The dog will be a dog. You can train him to put on a dress, you can make him jump through a hoop, you can do this, but he can only be a dog. But that instinct is clocked in him to help him survive in the wild. He's a survivor. But the human being without guidance, the human being, you don't know when the hell's going to jump off if he loses the guidance of the human being. He needs guidance and direction. He's helpless at birth. If he falls in a situation where the people aren't, aren't loving and caring and understand uh, guidance, that human being is going to grow up wrong. The human being is going to grow up in a bad situation. So it's important that those with the knowledge and the guidance and the hikmah to share for the little children. The little children need direction. The little children need schooling. They need direction. You think some of these young brothers, they get up here? I, I go to the various homes and the little places where the people are trying to keep various uh, addictive habits and whatever. And some of the little Muslim children, I used to see come in here with a little bow tie and stuff years ago, and now they're grown men. They, most of them got a real big, big baggy pants and stuff because they feel so little, I got to put some big clothes on them so I can feel like a man, so I can feel like a big man now and don't know that if they will work with, at a young age, and come into the Islamic personality, the Islamic understanding of creation, 
This learning understanding how to be productive. What your responsibilities are as a human being. Then you grow off into creation and step off into responsibility. Yes, sir. But we find that we get whooped. And we want to justify and rationalize wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the, you will separate the kabitha from the tayyibah, that which is corrupt from that which is honorable and decent. We can't justify wrong. We can't justify laziness, triflingness. We can't justify. You can't justify. Well, look, the, the white man or, or this man, it's always some other man. Now, he's a man, but what are you? So we, yeah, yeah they, uh, they did this. Look, yesterday was the Declaration of Independence. You study history, all the founding fathers, Jefferson and all the big boys, they would have been considered treasonous individuals against the King George III of England. But they had a vision. They were seeking religious freedom. And the first thing when they designed the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights and whatever, yep. they said we're going to separate from religion and the state. Now we as Muslims know there's no separation. Allah owns the individuals, <laughs> owns Caesar and his mother. Allah owns it all. Allah is sovereign. But what has evolved is it was a big war for civil war. What has evolved is the people had a vision for what they had come from. They had come from confusion. So they had to separate from that confusion they had come from. Study the Renaissance. Study the great European Renaissance. A lot of them don't like to talk. They don't teach you history from their point of view. They don't like to mention it. But they have run from the confusion from the religious community. They persecuted scientists. As they call the, 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 the founder of, of uh, uh, oxygen, Joseph Priestley, persecuted him. Mm -hmm. Sir Isaac Newton got a big college over there in, in England. Sir Isaac Newton Institution persecuted. Many of them, they burned at the stakes. Read uh, many of the reformers. They didn't want to go all the way. The ones that didn't believe and, and this distorted, corrupt idea of Almighty God, they burn at the stake. So they separated. They said, we're going to have religion, true religious freedom. We're going to give everybody an opportunity to practice their religion of their choice. But the state will separate from it. That's the only way we can function. And it separates the average citizen from these nuts out here that has confused and corrupted religion. So we're in a situation that we have to give substance to what we're about. A lot of people say, them old Muslims, they ain't nothing but a gang. They, they dress it up like that and crazy like that. They ain't doing nothing but hiding gang activity. <laughs> and you find them scared to, scared to come down here. Now we scared to come out. <laughs> no. You know, it's a saying. It says that if you see a butterfly, Struggling out of this cocoon, don't help. <laughs> because the strength that he's using to, to get out of the cocoon is the very strength he's going to need in his next stage of flying. If you help him, he'd be so weak he won't even be able to fly. <laughs> so what we've been doing, when we've come out of this cocoon of nationalism, coming out of this cocoon of blackness. See, we were separate. We were a separate black nation, separate. Some of the brothers still hung up on that. They don't understand the changes and the metamorphosis. That's why they can't fly now. <laughs> they don't understand the changes and the more metamorphosis is already taking place. Yes, sir. People are studying right now. Truth is free of error. Right. When Prophet Muhammad came into Mecca, 
and chased the idols, uh, cleared the climb of all the idols that they were worshiping. He said, What? What? Who? Jail Hot was the Hakkal battle. In that battle, our cannon is a hookah. Truth is here. Falsehood must perish, because falsehood is by nature, it's bound to perish. Yes. And that's the way falsehood is. Falsehood will perish. Right. It will perish. Yep. The truth, you don't have to put any clothes on it. Right. You want to worship a man? Go ahead. There's no force. Allah says, La ikra hafid di. No force. You go ahead. But the truth of the matter is, you worship below. He below, below the level he has created you. All right. So you can worship anything, but you worship it, if you worship other than Allah, you're worshiping below the level he has created you. Worship. Dear beloved Muslims, this affliction of disbelief is affect us, it affects us in every area. Mm. Every area. Mm. This affliction of disbelief. Yes. There are many people today walking around talking about a personal savior. We have to remember that no human being, we don't look to any human being to save us. There's no personal saviors in Al Islam. What it look like the Muslim talking about, I got a personal Allah. <laughs> A personal Allah. Here, Allah has created everything. And some people have become so arrogant. You don't know everything about the physical creation. Yep. If somebody would tell you certain spots on your own body to look at, you couldn't even look at without the aid of a mirror or something. You don't know what's on your own body in many cases. But some have become so arrogant. Talking about a savior. Yeah, you, you, you know, God's only son. You, 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 you know, uh, and you, get, you read the book. And I'm not saying it's disrespectful because many Christians visit us and observe. But you read the book, their book, their holy scripture. You got sons, so many of them, I can't even remember all of them. People are called son. Mm. Moses was called the son of God. Mm. In Exodus, the fourth chapter, and the 22nd verse. Oh, no. And thou, Moses, shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, mm. even my firstborn. Mm. So he is. Moses said Israel is the son of God. Or Jacob, Yaqub. So here he said Jacob is the son of God. Yaqub, you know, Jacob, after he realized that all the tricks he had done, this is Bible, after all the tricks he had done, he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And here in, in their book, now, when you find the intellectuals, all those who take so much oh, inaccuracy, they look it up, they say, oh, it, it does say that. Mm -hmm. Then they read again and say, he, Solomon, shall build a house for my name, and I shall establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. Here's Solomon, called the son of God. Then when you talk to them, you show them what's in their book. You know, one of our arms of faith is to accept all of the messages and the books they brought. Mm -hmm. So then he says, well, look, Jesus, he's the only begotten Son of God. Then you tell them long before Jesus was even born, Alayhi Salaam, may God forever be pleased with him, that God said to David, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, David, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. <laughs> so here, David is the only begotten son. So you're going to have to think now. My Christian brother is going to have to think. And all of the prophets, they were Muslim. The essence of what they taught was to get men to submit to Almighty God. Yes. 
And if you read that in the language, in the, in the Aramaic or in their language, you'll find it's just saying Islam. Our religion says that if you believe in God in the hereafter, you'll get your reward. You don't have to be a Muslim. Christians don't have to be a Muslim to appreciate the contribution of Muslims. And Muslims don't have to be Christians to appreciate the, Christ, the, the contributions that Christians are making to this society there. We shouldn't spend all this valuable time and energy looking enviously at our Christian brothers and sisters. If they have done and achieved something good, we should say, Alhamdulillah, I want to do that for my community. Yes, Lord. Lord. Now, if you've got hang-ups, if you don't want to be with other groups, this and that and the other, and you just slaughter up the process, go with the other groups. We don't worry about that as Muslims. Then they say, oh, well, uh, uh, but, he, oh, but he didn't have no earthly father. Then you, well, look here. Well, what have you got to say about that? Well, look. What about Adam? Adam didn't have a mother or father to deal with. Yes, you don't worship Adam. You don't deify Adam. He didn't have a mother or father to deal with. Jesus had a mother to deal with. Then what about this other fellow? My Christian scholar. I see him already be read back in there. Look, what about the other one? Said he didn't have beginning of days, no end of nights. No father, no mother, no beginning of, who was that? Melchizedek in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, the third verse. And this is the way you talk to him. I don't like to use the verse and all this stuff with him. But I'm saying the veracity and the truth that the Muslims say, hey, here it is. <laughs> So, this idea of deifying, <clears throat> and Jesus himself said, Nevertheless, I must watch the day and the morrow, for it should not be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. All Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killed the prophets and stoned them that are sent to her. <laughs> Jesus himself calls himself a prophet of God. 13th chapter of Luke, yes, sir. 33 and 34th verse. So you have this, this, this craziness. People wrap up in all this scholarship. And this, so this should be a sign to the Muslim. If these people take pride in all their intellectual, their scholarship and all this and all this, and they're basing their life on their scripture or what they have been given, because these are books that people have written about Jesus. Jesus never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. That's right. And you got Muslims got the same problems. <laughs> they dress themselves up, act all ethereal and this and that and the other, and don't understand that they talk about the Shafi, the Hanbali, and the different schools. And then all these great imams never named what they represented a school of thought. They never called it as such. It was those who came after that put these handles on it. So you got some out there that find this African American had opened the Quran up and began to read the Quran for himself and look up the word Madhab. Oh, Madhab from Zahab means the strategies, principles, and ideas, and those who follow certain policies, principles, and strategies, they call it Madhab. And they read the Quran, the Quran, the Sharia, yes, he follows, but when he runs out, certain things because of Allah's mercy didn't address. Out of his mercy. So when you run in a situation, it hasn't been clearly addressed in the Quran and Sharia, then that's when fit. Fit. You want to exert yourself to do the right thing, to get a clear understanding of the information involved and reflect on what God said through the Quran and the Sun. Yeah. And you grow into your responsibility and you're independent. 
they will are Muslims. It is the affliction, the affliction of disbelief that is generating the confusion and the apathy and the lack of participation that we see today. Our young people need direction. That's, right. That's what they need. They need a challenge. When he joins a gang, he's not challenged by the school. He's not challenged by the school. When he sees many of the teachers don't represent what he wants to see in terms of direction and participation in society. Mm. Nothing but sterility. Mm. He's not challenged. So he goes off in a game. They'll challenge him. Mm. He knows he might lose his life if he don't go along a certain way. He's quick. But we have to understand that we have a responsibility to establish and challenge our young folks and to introduce them to the Quran. You don't have Islamic life if you don't come to the Quran, and we're not talking about it in a spooky fashion, where you feel you're so inferior, you got to be other than what you are. And in Islam, the Prophet turned the Sahaba, the Sahabari, when you go to these areas, don't tell the people they have to become other than what they are to accept that Islam. You don't have to talk down to the people. Brother teach a, one, a brother from Egypt, he teaches a brother Arabic, and he had a brother, he, he had lost all senses. He took the toilet off the, the bathroom, and he, uh, <laughs> you're not in Arabia. Take the toilet out the bathroom, just put tents in the living room, the all kinds. Why are you picking up all this stuff? <laughs> no. Rabbana atina fi dunya hassana wa fi al-akhirah wa hassana wa qana Say my prayer and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death, all belong to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. No partner has he. This I am commanded, and I am the first of those to submit to his will. Dear beloved Muslims, in conclusion of this uh, khutbah, the affliction of disbelief. As we stated earlier, that the biggest problem that we face today is not drug addiction, not teenage pregnancies, not robbery and crime. The biggest problem that confronts the humanity today is the affliction of disbelief. To disbelieve in Allah, God, who created not only Him, but everything and everyone. But the minute you corrupt that idea, the minute you say Almighty God is a particular ethnic group, and people today are trying to deal with problems of ethnicity, problems of race, and there are many who feel that the only way I can uh, uh, get what's mine is I have to do what they have done. So they've done, so they think, a pretty good job of saying God's like them. So it's all right if I just make a God look like me. Hmm. But we as Muslims, we don't attribute these anthropomorphic concepts to a loss of power of our It is Allah who has given us our color. Many people that were given color of the European type, many of them, they're not satisfied 
This time of the year, oh, I got a ripple in my tail. Oh, look how beautiful I am. Yes, sir. Then we got the other group. They're not satisfied with their blackness. They got bleaching creams. You know, some of you, so many of these bleaching creams, their face get just as white, their neck is just as dark as it can be. I've seen many of them do this. And not satisfied. So the human being, if we reflect that in this diversity is what makes it so beautiful. It'll be a messed up place if we all look alike. I see some of you out there, or you look at me, if we all look the same, it would be a pretty dull place around here. <laughs> but it's so beautiful that Allah has given us, we're different. Different experiences, different talents, but yet we're the same. Fahim, we're the same. We don't accentuate our differences, but our unity and our oneness making up the human family. So when you have a situation, and this Quran is challenging to creation because we know there are those, not all, have come up with these concepts. But we have a book that is free of error. And it says, Very calcitabu la raiba ti hudan nil mustaki. And Navina yukmenuna zil gai. Wa yukimu nasalat. Wa mimma razak nahu. Yun peku. And here's a book that's free of doubt. Now, if you have a book that's free of doubt, mm -hmm. why is it that you never want to read it? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Why is it that you want to just take it out during Ramadan? I'm going, I'm going to take it out during Ramadan when everybody else is reading it. <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to read it now. Hey, I, I can't understand it. You know, it's too hard. And Allah has said that he has made this book easy yes. for you to remember and to recite. And it says in the Quran, from the word kara'a, means to recite. You see? It says, this is the book, in it is guiding sure without doubt to those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen, the Bilqai. Now, if you it is the scientists also believe in the unseen. They have faith, but they can't just come out and say, I have faith, but he believes in the unseen. Yeah. He just calls it an hypothesis. Yeah. I got an hypothesis. He, he ran it back. Well, I think I've got an hypothesis now. And, it, and his scholarship is learning. It might be a discipline of chemistry, or it might be a discipline of engineering, or it might be a discipline, and he's thinking of this building he's going to build. And, and he knows about levers and cantilever beams and all these different things in engineering. Mm -hmm. So he rears back, I think I have an hypothesis. I'm going to build a building, and everybody's going to all over the world. And some of these architects, these real big, tall buildings, and what goes in, the knowledge that goes in to making these structures. Mm -hmm. And we find that it was one Muslim, I think a Chinese in the architecture. But we find that. He believes in the unseen. He uses what Allah has given in the creation here. So the man is educated. The man that has received some scholarship, he's not threatened by problems. The problems, he welcomes the problems because he knows he's equipped. The challenge. He knows that if he solves the problem, there's a great reward in solving problems. 